Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,428. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got to see how to use the VLOOKUP COUNTIFS and IF functions in a helper column to calculate asset current value. Now, here's our table. We have year investment and the increase or decrease in the value of the investment for each year. Over here, we have a separate table. We have five investments and the initial investment for each investment listed here. Now, as we think of a helper column, since this is the very first year, I need to multiply 1 plus the rate of change, or the growth rate, times the investment listed over here. That would be this 25,000. But as I copy the formula down, to the next cell and the next cell, well, each subsequent formula actually has to look at the value from the year before. So it's only when we hit the investment the first time that we need to look this up over here. Subsequently, all the way down, we're always looking at a relative cell reference one above. And then when we hit a new investment down here, we need to run VLOOKUP again to get the initial investment. Now I'm going to come up here. Well, the logical test to decide whether to use VLOOKUP or simply get the cell from above is going to be, is it the first time we've seen the investment? Now, since we have one of two things to put in the cell, I'm going to use the IF function. In the logical test, I simply need to ask, are you the first one? Are you the first one? Well, I'm going to use count ifs to get a running count as I copy the formula down. Now, criteria range. I need an expandable range. Because this is an Excel table, if I click in a particular cell, it puts in the table formula nomenclature. And in square brackets, we have the field name. That at symbol means please get it as a relative cell reference. If you know DAX, that is the row context. It means not the whole column, just the item from that column in this current row. Now, that is a relative cell reference. What I really want is I want it locked at the top. So as I copy down, it's locked on B4. So to do that, I type B dollar sign 4, locking row 4, and then type a colon. That will work. Relative cell reference, locked. So as I copy down, it will be an expandable range, comma. And then the condition for counting or the criteria is relative cell reference. Let's just see what this looks like if I close parentheses. Actually, I'm going to get rid of the if. Just enter, and it copies all the way down. Now, it's got the currency formatting because the value is going to be in dollars. But notice 1, 2, 3, 4, it's counting. And then when it gets to a new investment, it's 1 again. Down here, it's 1 again. So our logical test, which will determine true or false, F2 to put it in edit mode, I'm going to ask the question, are you equal to 1? Now when I hit Enter and copy it all the way down, true, I need to use VLOOKUP. False, I'm not using VLOOKUP. I'm going to use relative cell reference. True, VLOOKUP. Click in the cell F2. Now I use my IF. Come to the end, comma. And the value with true is going to be VLOOKUP. Lookup value, I'm looking up as a relative cell reference, the name of the investment, comma. The table, this is also an Excel table, so watch what happens when I highlight the table not including the field names. It puts in just the table name. And of course, that's locked when I copy down, comma. Column index, I'm counting on my fingers, one, two. The second column has the thing I want to go and get and bring back to the formula, so I type a two. The first column is not necessarily sorted, so I'm using exact match. You can put a false or zero. They both instruct VLOOKUP to do exact match. Close parentheses. Now, in the value of true, boom, there's our VLOOKUP. Come to the end, comma, value of false, it's always going to be a relative cell reference. Now, I am not going to use that because, look, they put in the table formula nomenclature for headers. So I'm going to click value with false, and I'm simply going to type D3 in there, D3. So now the either or for our amount to multiply by 1 plus the percentage change is either 
Relative cell reference, the previous balance, or VLOOKUP, because it's the first time we've seen this. Now I'm going to close parentheses. If I hit Enter here, it has the same amount all the way down, because we don't have our rate yet. But let's click at the top F2. What am I going to multiply by that amount? Times, in parentheses, 1 plus, as a relative cell reference, the percentage change. Close parentheses, and that formula will work. When I hit Enter, Boom, all the way down. And you could prove this to yourself. You could say, well, if I can't see that that's actually giving me one cell above, I could say equals this times, open parentheses, 1 plus that percentage. Come to the end, close parentheses, and there we go. Also down here, you could test it, right? I could say equals and manually go fund B times in parentheses 1 plus that rate right there, close parentheses, just manually verifying that we're getting the correct amount. We could also, to verify, since it was hard to see with the, all the 25,000s, come down to some particular cell up to formulas, over to formula auditing and click evaluate formula, or you can use the keyboard. Alt-M-V. And watch this. Now we can see whether for fund A, is it getting 25,000 or is it getting the cell above? I'm simply going to click Evaluate to watch. The count ifs, part of it, I'm clicking and watching the underline. 15 does not equal 1, so that comes out false. So now when it evaluates the whole F, it's going to get that D7 right there. I click Evaluate. You could see, sure enough, it got the cell above, and then it does the rest. Evaluate, evaluate, enter, enter, escape. All right, that was how to calculate current value with countifs, VLOOKUP, and IF. We'll see you next video.